Today's case study is a really interesting one. As you heard, we're talking a lot about automated production and we have two fantastic guests joining us today. We have from Pixelot, their president of North America, David Shapiro, and a good friend of SVG College, a former keynoter at this event, uh, Amy Hutchhausen. She is the commissioner of the America East Conference. Uh, to the both of you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, first off, I wanna start with you, David. Uh, we talked a little bit about this in the throw over here, talking about automated production. Uh, give us a little bit of a look at what Pixelot uh, brings to the table in terms of automated production technology and how they're revolutionizing the workflows right now. Yeah, first, thanks so much for having us on here, Brandon. Um, so Pixelot, obviously sports production has been around for a long time, um, and it's mostly been focused at the higher levels of sport, you know, Major League Baseball, NBA, NFL, et cetera. And over the last 20 to 30 years, obviously, has moved its way down into college sports. Um, but really, where, where Pixelot is focused is in the automated sports production space. So what we're trying to do is make millions of small sports events big. So we want to cover the events that uh, previously were not being covered by big production. We want to give schools, leagues, associations the opportunity to cover those sports in a big way. Um, so a little bit of background on Pixelot is uh, we've been around for about six years now. Uh, we were started in 2014. Uh, we have our technology installed at over 8,000 fields and venues across the world. Uh, just before the pandemic hit in February of this year, we produced 90,000 live hours of sports content. Uh, and the reason I give you those fields and number of hours produced is everything that we do is based on AI and machine learning. So with every single game that we produce, our production gets better. So the more games that we're producing, the better that production is going to be. Uh, we have unique algorithms now for 14 different sports. Um, so pretty much everything on a rectangular field, sports like soccer, American football, basketball, lacrosse, field hockey, and then now also have a solution for uh, baseball and softball. And in fact, today, the first semi-pro baseball game is back with the San Diego League. Uh, it's a collegiate summer league like the Cape Cod League. Uh, they're playing only with players and coaches, and Pixelot's actually producing that game as we speak here. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we're the world's largest producer of live sports. Um, the, the number of games that ESPN produces in a given year is about 23,000 games. As you see on your screen here, uh, in February, we produced 40,000 live games. So in one month, about double the level. I know obviously ESPN is producing at a different level of quality. It's more the A-level shows and Pixlot is focused on that lower tier marketplace. And so we're really doing it at volume. Uh, so right now, a new game that we're producing starts every 60 seconds. Uh, now, obviously that was pre-pandemic and uh, today we're not producing a game every 60 seconds, but Hopefully in the coming months as sports come back, we'll be back to those levels. Uh, this slide shows you some of the partnerships that we have that we're really proud of. As I mentioned, there's 8,000 logos that we work with, so we didn't put all those on the screen here, but ESPN is a partner of ours. We'll talk about that partnership that we did with them in the America East uh, later on. The NFHS Network is also a significant partnership that we have. Um, so they produce most of the high school sports in this country. They have our technology installed on about 4,000 high school fields. Last year in 2019, we produced about 200,000 games for NFHS Network. And we're doing everything from broadcasting production to also coaching content. So some of the other uh, logos you see like FC Barcelona, Bayern Munich, uh, they're using our technology from a coaching perspective. Uh, so just to give you a, a quick example of what the video looks like, the video you see on your screen now uh, was actually in partnership with ESPN. Uh, it was done as part of the NBA Summer League last summer, where we produced about 40 games for them. Everything you see is 100% automated, from the tracking of play, to the graphics, to the scoreboard, the time clock, all of that is automated. There's not one person involved in this broadcast. Uh, one of the new things that we're focused on now, which you see on your screen, is automating uh, player highlights. So we're tracking every player with optical recognition by their uniform number. So you'll see as that video on the left side of your screen plays, uh, you see we're tracking them throughout the state of play. And then post game, what you see is on the right side, which is creating a highlight clip, again, automatically of each number and the baskets that they scored during the game. 
Uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about uh, quickly here before we jump into the interview portion of this, Brandon, is the importance of automated video in today's marketplace. So obviously, uh, every high school, college, professional sport is looking at things differently. Um, and so fan safety is obviously a, a critical piece. Uh, as games get started for a, a period of time, there's going to be no fans in the crowd, and then we'll probably roll into limited uh, fans. And so you've got to find a new way to reach those fans with your content. And that's one of the things that Pixlot is able to help uh, colleges, universities, and other partners with. Uh, athlete safety, we obviously have to limit, uh, limit the number of people on the field around our athletes so that uh, they don't get infected. Uh, as the Major League Baseball is talking about coming back, NBA and MLS have plans. They're quarantining athletes at every level. We're not going to be able to do that. Um, but we can limit the number of people. For example, not having cameramen, not having production crews uh, can be important to, to athlete safety. Diversified revenue streams. So I think it's going to be important as schools come back to look at other ways to generate revenue. Uh, so that could be through having pay-per-view of your content. It could be through finding new ways to integrate sponsors with your digital content. Uh, there's a lot of new ways I think that people are going to look at have to developing revenue and we can help them with that through automated production. And then expanded reach of your content, being able to take your content to more people, reach more alumni, important donors, uh, reach fans that otherwise would have came, come to games, uh, live streaming gives you the ability to do that. And then finally, cost savings. I think that everybody is gonna have to look at doing things more efficiently as uh, budgets are hit, and uh, we're not able to do things the way that we did in the past. Uh, and Pixlot is able to, to give schools the opportunity to produce games at far less cost and also less time from their staff. All right, really interesting stuff, Dave. Uh, I wanted to get Amy in here. Uh, you know, I, personally, we've been hearing a lot about this um, professionally and in the collegiate ranks, uh, people wanting to know more about automated production, whether it's end-to-end -end or even in a hybrid kind of a way, uh, especially in a post-COVID world where we don't know how many people we're gonna be able to have in a control room on a given day or how many people are allowed to be in, in a stadium at all. Uh, your involvement in this, your conference is involved in, in this goes long before that. So while it seems obvious now, <laughs> at the time, why was in automated production something that was interesting to you in the America East uh, at the time you first started dabbling in? Yeah, th thanks, Brandon. Um, the we certainly got into this automated production concept and wanted to explore it. Like you said before, we knew the pandemic was coming. <clears throat> so the you know the reasons we wanted to do that was simply to try to get as, as much content out there as possible and deliver it to our partner ESPN uh, for their ESPN three or ESPN plus uh, platform. And being a mid major conference with you know budget constraints, staffing constraints. We were trying to help our schools identify, um, you know, delivery mechanisms and production mechanisms that would allow them to do that within their budget and within their staffing constraints. And that's where, you know, talking with ESPN, um, we had already been in, in conversation with Pixelot. Um, you know, we we're really fortunate that, however, you know, those conversations were happening on the back end from ESPN's perspective uh, and with their partners' perspectives. Um, <clears throat> you know, they agreed to let us be a, a pilot run a pilot with Pixlot and another uh, automated production company. And so for the last, you know, for this past ac academic year, we had a few of our schools that were running pilots and, you know, going back to last fall already with some soccer games. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're poised to do it for lacrosse this spring as well. Um, and, you know, really looking forward just for efficiencies and to maximize our, our output from, from a production standpoint. So that's, that's why we originally got into it just to like, learn a little bit more about these, uh, learn a little bit more about automated production generally mm -hmm. uh, and let our schools experiment with that because we saw this as I think, and it still is, I think a really viable opportunity for some of our schools and other colleges across the country to, to really increase the number of productions they're doing exponentially. Right, right. Now that makes a lot of sense. So, so since, you, uh, since you and the conference first started doing this, two big things have happened. One, you've gotten experience with it and you've produced quite a few events that way and distributed them that, under this model. And two, the pandemic happened. So how do those two things combined and make you view this differently and how does it make you feel about the future of it um, as the America East hopefully does soon get back to regular play? 
Yeah, I mean, it only reinforces, I think, our original <laughs> interest and commitment to try and, you know, find some some longer term solutions in this space. I mean, certainly having a year under your belt, both from, I think David would say this, from the production side and from what they're doing, you know, you heard him say, it's AI and machine learning. The more games they do, the, the better the algorithm gets. And so certainly we want to be part of that process and the number of games that we did last year helps that. And, you know, by doing it again this year, that's only going to con continue to improve, you know, their production capabilities. And then for us, you know, and he mentioned this as well, as we think about getting back to campuses, um, having to be mindful of physical distancing, even for production crews, you know, to me, it, this, <laughs> this pilot comes together really well, you know, for us and allows our schools to maybe, particularly the ones that are, have already these units installed, to keep producing in soccer, for example, without having to, you know, think about a new production workflow because they now have to take into consideration distancing. And so I think it, it positions, it just continues to position us really well uh, to move forward with this and hopefully expand it as the year and years go on. Dave, uh, you guys get a lot out of this relationship too. For a company like yours, one of the benefits of working with a collegiate conference uh, like Amy's in the America East is there's a lot of game inventory there. You can get a lot of reps for your system. What do you think you, uh, the company Pixelot has gotten um, out of the relationship with the America East and maybe what's some of the feedback or some of the learnings that you've gotten from being able to get quite a few games under your belt this way? Yeah, it has been extremely helpful to work with the America East um, and show off our production at the collegiate level and have that content uh, viewed on ESPN Plus, which is obviously a, a premium platform. Uh, and I think, you know, as you'll, you see on your screen, um, there's two different videos here. One is coming from a man camera operator, which the America East was typically producing soccer with a two to three camera production. Um, so that's the video on your left. And then the video on your right is the Pixlot production. And so I'd say, you know, these two productions are pretty comparable. Um, I, I think what Pixlot's able to do better is you'll see as the cameras transition from one camera to another in the video that's on the left, there's a little bit of shakiness. Uh, whereas with ours, you're able to transition those cameras and see it, um, I think, in a, a better way. Also, you'll see the lighting and colors that we're able to adapt to with shadows from lights, et cetera, uh, we can improve upon. So Amy is exactly right. The more games and more reps that we do, the better our production is going to get. So in a sport like soccer, which we did a lot of with America East, um, our production has gotten to a really high level. In sports like lacrosse and field hockey, um, we're, we're close to being there, but we do need more reps there. And that's what we were really excited this spring to do a lot of those two sports with the America East. Unfortunately, that got shut down. So uh, in 2021, we'll look to get into those sports again. Great, great. Uh, Amy, you touched on this a little bit, and I would love to get your thoughts while we have you. Obviously, this is going to be a very complex, at time convoluted issue that I'm sure is going to come down to individual states, not even individual conferences. Um, but can you give any insight to any of the conversations that you're having and how you might see production and uh, even just having hosting physical events at all, uh, what kind of adjustments you might need to make, at least in your geographic region that your that your schools represent? Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I know for certain, Brandon, is that everyone is waiting for their crystal ball to be delivered from Amazon <laughs> to help us guide us just a little bit. We don't even need all the answers, right? Just, <laughs> just a little, a little bit. Just a little um, bit. No, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see, to your point, states and outbreaks, and we'll see how all this unfolds here over the next several weeks and months. I mean, one thing that we always come back to when you start to go down the rabbit hole is it's still only June. You know, we're still have got a little bit of time. A lot of campuses are still have to make their decisions. Most student athletes still are not on campus yet. So we're still optimistic that we will have fall sports this year. Um, and, that, and that's where I do think the productions are going to be even more important than ever. I mean, certainly we've always wanted as many of our, our games to be produced for ESPN Plus or ESPN3, and that doesn't change. But now that you will have likely attendance restrictions, um, that's only going to increase the value, I think, on, on delivering those for every single game and not just a few select games. And so right. I think, again, it, you know, it's not how, you know, a company like Pixelot or anyone would want to walk into this, but it's certainly a fantastic opportunity for anyone in this space to really showcase their, their capabilities 
and show their value. And so we're hoping, you know, to certainly take advantage of that and our existing partnership with them um, to help our schools provide as many uh, as many events as they can play. You know, hopefully they're all they're all getting on ESPN three or ESPN plus candidly, so that their their fans who might not be able to show up at, at the game in person can now everyone should be able to watch it watch it online. Yeah, whether it's uh, fans, friends, family, you, we might have circumstances where people who want to go to the games physically cannot, and this will be the way that they'll be able to uh, consume it, depending on the sport, I'm sure. Uh, Dave, real quickly before we go, uh, for other schools and or conferences that are out there watching the show right now, um, what can they take away from maybe the learnings of uh, the work that you've done with the America East and how maybe can you potentially help them in the future if they're interested? Yeah, I mean, first, I, I agree with everything that Amy just talked about. Um, and I'd say that the new normal that we're all going into is not going to be very normal. And a lot of people think of this just hitting like the big venues where you're not going to have 40,000 people at a game, but it hits everything down to the small venue that has a 1000 people in a game. Because That's a smaller venue, you still can't have people on, on top of each other. So I think it, there's going to be a challenge, certainly for schools to connect with their fan base. Uh, to generate revenue and to find a way to match their expense budget with that declining revenue. Uh, and PixLock can really help schools on all three of those levels. Uh, we also have the addition of VidSwap, which we added within the last couple months, which is a coaching analytic breakdown and exchange company. So not only now are we capturing that video to help schools with their broadcast needs, but also with their coaching needs so that a coach doesn't have to have a video coordinator at practice or games the video that we're producing can turn on, feed automatically into that, and a coach gets their breakdown and analytics within four to six hours. Uh, so in closing, what I would say is that these are scary times for all of us, uh, but we're going to get through this together as an industry, I think. And all of us are being forced, including the way this conference is being held, right? This has always been in person. Mm -hmm. Now it's being done virtually. We have to find ways to utilize technology to do things differently. And the pandemic has really forced all of us to look at doing things more efficiently and pick slots here to help your conference or university to adjust to the changing market. All right. Well, fascinating stuff from the both of you. Uh, Amy, first off, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we know that you've probably got one of the more challenging, busier summers of your career ahead of you. So we wish you nothing but the best uh, as we can hopefully can get back to sports in the fall sports season safely and, uh, in a healthy manner. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best going forward. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Brandon. And Dave, we really appreciate your support of the event. Thank you for supporting the SVG College community. And uh, thanks for this really in insightful look at some uh, very realistic and helpful options for other colleges and conferences going forward. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brandon.